three in 60 and two thirds innings coming in. Wastes a fastball. You see that a lot in the college game. They don't really go inside and bust anybody anymore. 0 2. They will go outside, and, and if the umpire gives it to them, they'll stay way out there. But his out pitch is a fastball that's going to fade away from a right hander and go towards that left handed batter's box. Johnston now holds the school record for Texas, 113 hits this year. This hit towards short in front of the advancing runner. Out. And Justin Torty will throw him out for the second out of the inning. It's a nice play all around. You know, the, the basic rule of, of thumb is if the ball's in front of you, you don't want to advance. But if if uh, you feel like it's a chopper like that was, you can get third great job. And Torty has ignored the base runner. Watch this play. You see people's got a great lead. He knew exactly where that ball was at. And Torty did a good job of ignoring him and get the out. Now, if you're Torty and there's nobody out, you think about making that play to third. It's definitely tempting. This one is in the dirt to Carson Kiner. Excuse me, Will Crouch. Kiner's on deck. Hit to straightaway center field. Corsoletti took a step in, and the ball sails over his head. That'll get a run hard, and it's 1-0 Texas. Well, that was a tracer, too. I mean, he hit a missile right there. He got a fastball down and just hit a Mimi to center field. And I don't know if he had a chance to catch this ball or not. It was, it was hit pretty hard. Ball down. He stayed right through this ball. Here's a good look at the center fielder. See, he takes the reach step, and by the time he goes back, he's got no chance. And that is a screaming Mimi over his head. So Texas does what it has traditionally felt was a huge advantage. They get the first run of the ball game. They're up 1-0, have a runner at second. And Carson Kiner coming up. Well, Routes now hitting 500 in the NCAA and has 12 RBIs. He's hit safely in 11 of 13 games. He's been their best hitter in the postseason. See, and when you give up that, that out to move him into second, now you got the middle of your order to drive him in. You're going to go ahead and take those opportunities. It's almost a double bonus with, with the ball that he hits. He ends up at second base and then just drive a guy in. Exactly. Now you've got an opportunity to pick up another one. I, I like the philosophy that they play with. Kiner's been outstanding all year with runners in scoring position. Oh, no. And the first base umpire says he went around. The call by Dan Moscoro. I think it's the toughest call in, in, in baseball right there. That's a tough one. I don't know if he went or didn't, but you got to start your hands. Some people say it passes the plate. That's a swing. Other people say the barrel has to pass the plate. Barrel of the bat. Mm hmm. Fastball in there for a called strike. That's 0-2 to Kiner. A run home, two out here in the Texas first inning. Well, I like how Locke has changed his pattern. He got him with the change up to check swing, and then he threw a fastball in. It's something we had not been seeing from the right-handed hitters. See how the catcher, Drawman's already set up. It looks like he's going to try to bounce outside for that 0-2 pitch again. Swing and a miss on an 0-2 curveball. The inning is over, but Texas already has the advantage. The Longhorns up 1-0.
Welcome back to the College World Series. We'll go to the Florida first. The Gators trailing the Texas Longhorns. 1-0. Let's take a look at the Sonic Florida Gators starting lineup. They'll start it off with Corsoletti. This is a well-balanced lefty-righty lineup and a good hitting team during the regular season showing a lot of power, but they have struggled a little bit out here in Omaha, only hitting 233 as a team. And Adrian Alanis gets the start for Texas, 7-3 and three this year. He's already won one game in the College World Series, went seven innings, allowed only one run, and has a 1.29 ERA in the College World Series, 2.67 for the season. Well, what you're going to see from him is a fastball about 88 to 90 miles an hour. He will locate it with a lot of movement. He gets tremendous movement. And, Mike, I think the most impressive stat about this guy, I know he threw a no-hitter earlier this season, but in high school he was 48 and 1. Mercy. That's pretty good. <laughs> Incredible. He's a very quiet kid and reserved, but a tremendous competitor. And he will face Jeff Corsoletti, who's hitting 333 in Omaha. Corsoletti had three doubles in a single game earlier in the tournament. And has 100 career hits as a Gator. That's only the fifth time it's ever been done. Needs only five more for a school record. Two strikes from Alanis. Interesting. He started the first pitch of the game with curveball for a strike. Then he missed with the fastball and came back with another breaking ball. And anytime a pitcher does that as the count goes to 2-2, two -two, now you're not sure what he's going to do. As a hitter. Yeah. It, it kind of, especially a leadoff guy, you're always anticipating that first pitch fastball. Will it be in or will it be away? But guys usually don't throw a breaking ball first pitch. Hit on the ground to short. Johnston, normally the sure fielding shortstop, can't come up with it. Texas, one of the top teams in the country defensively. That's one of those balls that I think he got caught in between. Do I catch the ball up top with my glove or do I turn my glove over? And as he went down, that ball just, he just missed it. And sometimes you do that. See him flip his glove at the last second, and he just just flat missed it. And this is one of the top fielding shortstops in the history of this university. And they've had some good ones. Spike Owen uh, was tremendous, one of the top all times in the major leagues. He played there, and this kid is right there average-wise with the wall. I mean, that just didn't hit off the heel of his glove and almost missed his glove. He just missed it. Wow. So a break for the Gators. And gets Adam Davis to the plate with nobody out. Davis with four hits out here. And Corsoletti, a good base stealer, checking throw over by Alanis. See if Pat McMahon wants to try a steal or a hit and run early. And that's what Texas is thinking. There's Pat McMahon, who emotional outburst the other night, credited with sparking his team. He said what he was proud of, he went the entire argument without using a curse word, which means he has a, a lot more deportment than most of us <laughs> and a, a better internal code of conduct. But he was out there fighting tooth and nail for his ball club and his school. And that's one of the reasons he didn't get thrown out of that ball game either. That, that's for sure. <laughs> Strike call on the corner, one and two. That, of course, was the controversial fan interference call. And his team at the, that point down 3 nothing, and it appeared to wake them up. The 1-2 chopped up the middle. Johnston steps on the bag, throws it across for the twin killer. 
So Johnson atones for his error with the double play. Well, that's just Seth Johnston right there making the play. Now, he and Robbie Hudson work very well together up the middle, and a lot of times you'll see the shortstop and second base will get crossed up on a ball in the middle. Anytime the shortstop is going towards the base and he can take that ball, you defer to him and let him take it. School record 78th double play. That's how good that infield has been this year. And on the left side of that infield with Marol and Johnston, you might as well try to hit it somewhere else because it rarely gets through. You're absolutely right. Those two cover a lot of ground over there. I think one of the benefits is that Johnston can play a little more towards second base because Marol has such incredible range to his left toward the hole. It's always a benefit when those guys on the corner have range. Well, Matt Laporta has got some power. He isn't thinking about hitting it through the little hole over there between <laughs> those two. He's thinking about hitting it to that scoreboard out there like he did almost the other day. Won the national home run title when he hit his 26th out here. Came in tied for the national lead, but he obviously just has awesome power. The thing was over the inner fence, over the outer fence, and halfway down the halfway down the hill toward the parking lot, and there's not much room between Carson Kiner and left in the wall. It's not going to get over his head. This one is hit to straightaway center field, and Stubbs came on and made a shoot top catch for the third out of the inning. So an error starts it off, but doesn't hurt Texas. You're watching ESPN's coverage of the 2005 College World Series where the Texas Longhorns are taking on the Florida Gators from Omaha, Nebraska. Due to time constraints, we move ahead in our coverage. Chance Wheelis stands in, the first baseman, who's had a problem with a dislocated front shoulder, and it hurt him so bad the other night against Baylor that on a ground out, he couldn't even run it out took the swing and just collapsed in the batter's box. Came ninth inning and Augie Garrido had decided to pinch hit for him. He talked him out of it. He says, I hit this guy really well. And Augie said, what about your shoulder? And he repeated, I hit this guy really <laughs> well. And Augie Garrido sent him up and he pulled a Kirk Gibson and drilled it into the seats for a walk-off home run. Well, I just love the fact that Augie looks at this as life lessons more so than, yep. all right, we're going to win this thing, and I need you to hit a home run here. He looks at it like, all right, what's this young man going to learn from this experience? And that, to me, is what this is all about. He said, I understand the winning part, but that's not the most important part. And Wheelis goes down swinging for the second out. And Locke looked really sharp right there. He was able to get that fastball on the other side, which we hadn't seen, which had been into a right-hander away from a left-hander. He wasn't able to get that into the right-handers. And then threw a nice breaking ball right there to put Chance out. And normally, Wheelis hits left-handers pretty well. David Marole, the third baseman, stands in and takes a fastball low. In the Texas second, the Longhorns scored in the first to take the lead. We're all a 23rd round pick of the Giants this year. And it's been a better hit in the postseason because he's gotten swings like that. Knocks this down the left field line. Dickey over. And the ball goes under him. And he has no play at second base as Morrell cruises in there. Dickey got over there quickly, then couldn't handle it. Yeah, he couldn't handle it. Got himself in a little bit of a hurry to try to think he might have a play. See, you get a good look. He's got great explosiveness to cut this off. And the thing I'm looking for is where's the base runner at? He may have been able to have a play at second base on that. Could have. But Morrall has been swinging the bat. I think this kid's going to be a pretty doggone good professional player. He's great defensively, but I think he's going to hit a little more than, than normal. They're going to give Marol a single and an error on the left fielder, Gavin Dickey. So a runner at second with two out for Hudson, who was way out in front of a change. The amazing thing is the scouting from both clubs. And 
Robbie Hudson's a guy that likes to go up there swinging. First pitch he sees is a changeup. You know, they know that. And Augie knows that. And Pat McMahon of Florida knows that. When the scouting report says his favorite pitch is anything white and moving, <laughs> <laughs> then, then we know. And a lot of guys are like that. I mean, they're, they're very aggressive hitters. And Naris Wheelis says they are going to work on the uh, tape job that they have around that right shoulder trying to keep it in place. Had problems with that for a long time, and he's a the guy they're going to need with that power. Well, he's got a shoulder that pops in and out. And uh, that's going to be troublesome for a little while there until he gets that fixed. And anybody that has ever had anything dislocate knows the incredible pain involved with that. They took him back in the clubhouse and loosened that up a little bit for him. He said it was too tight, we understand. And there was a breaking ball from Locke that hung way outside. Got to give Wheelis a lot of credit. I'm going to play with pain for as long as you can stand it, and that's what he's been doing. Yeah, that's tough. Two and two to Hudson. Hit down to third. Tough hop. The ball's knocked away. Runners at first and third. As MacArthur had that ball come up on him and couldn't field it cleanly. Well, he's got Moral coming down at him, and a lot of times when you feel the ground ball like this, you catch that guy out of the corner of your eye. You're not expecting him to come right there because in your mind, you know where he starts. The ground ball's in front of him. Most base runners are not going to go, and that ball kicked on him, and he just wasn't able to field it. But I think some of that had to do with you feel that runner coming down the line, and with one out and a ground, with two outs and a ground ball that way, you don't think he's coming there. Well, you don't have to worry about him either, though. Yeah. It's an easy tag. If you catch it, you just tag him out. The, the runner usually waits and freezes and lets you throw across the diamond. That's the second error for the Gators and has runners at first and third and brings the top of the order back in Nick Peoples. Peoples walked and scored to start the ball game. Little chopper out in front of the plate. Locked. Out. Pounces on it and throws him out to end the inning. So a single and a couple of errors, but they do not score. We'll go to the bottom of the second in the one nothing game. You're watching ESPN's coverage of the 2005 College World Series where the Texas Longhorns are taking on the Florida Gators from Omaha, Nebraska. Due to time constraints, we move ahead in our coverage. Game one of the championship series here at the College World Series. Texas leading Florida one to nothing. Florida head coach Pac McMahon joining me right now. You said this morning this championship series is a whole new ball game. Two errors by your team in the top of the second. How do you think they're reacting to the pressure? They're doing outstanding. You know, those are tough plays. The ball that Gavin has trouble backhand and, and, and Brandon on a tough hop right there. And you've got to defend the field, stay away from leadoff walks to be successful. And, and we'll continue to do that. We've had some quality at bats. We've got to obviously stay out of the double play. And keep it going. And speaking of pressure, how about your freshman on the mound tonight? How do you evaluate his performance so far? He's handling it fine. I mean, I'm really excited to see him out there. He's got to continue to make quality pitches. Do a little bit better job of locating, but he likes to be out there. He's doing a great job for us. Coach, thanks for your time. Thank you. Mike. Thanks, Aaron. And Pat McMahon has won 525 games in his career at Old Dominion, Mississippi State, and now Florida. And there are certain people, Harold, you know when they go to another program that they are going to succeed and it's not going to take them that long. There are people that know how to coach this game and Pat McMahon is one of those guys and Florida is not going to be a stranger coming to the College World Series. No, they're not. He's, he's turned this program around and like you said, it hasn't taken a long time to do it. Stubbs will lead it off in the Texas third. Grounds towards short. Torrey throws him out. Well, I think the defense is going to settle down now. You know, the first couple innings is always a little bit bumpy in this situation. And any time that you line up on the lines when you start getting called and you line up on the lines, all of a sudden you realize this is a whole different situation. It is not the same as any other game. And, and you feel that. That takes you to another level of nervousness. And I think the, the kids are starting to settle down now and play some baseball. Yeah, Harold, you're right. Even if they had uh, 
overcome the nervousness of being out here in the first place. Now you're introduced yeah. by the public address announcer individually, and you stand on that line, and uh, there's a flyover and the national anthem. It becomes a very big deal. Adam Davis down at second base. Too quickly out on ground balls. The College World Series will continue tomorrow afternoon at 3 Eastern. We'll have game two of this championship series. Remember, it's the best two out of three. The College World Series is also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Will Crouch stands in with two out and nobody on. Here in the third, Crouch drove in the only run of the game with a ringing double to center field. Well, the thing I liked about it, Mike, he went down and got a fastball. And, and a lot of times off left hand, as you try to pull off the ball, he stayed right on this ball, took it right up the middle. So it tells me he's got a pretty good approach, thinking about taking him back up the middle or right field. He yanks this one to left. It will go into the stands foul. When you say pull off, is that because as a right-handed you expect to be able to pull a lefty? Yeah, a lot of times when a guy is throwing soft, you get out in front, you end up pulling it. Like right there, he got a breaking ball. He still was able to pull that ball and keep it foul, but most guys will hook that ball even into the dugout if you're not thinking about take it right back up the middle, try to be patient with it. Well, he's thinking well about something, hitting 500 over the stretch of the NCAA. Hitting 417 out here before the double. Now he's six out of 13. So close to 500 out here in Omaha. And he's one of the undrafted kids on the team. And, and he's a senior, obviously, eligible to be signed. And he's one of the guys that didn't get drafted this year. And I'm sure somebody will pick him up. His dad, Jim, was on this club back in the 70s when they won two Southwest Conference titles. And this ball is crushed. It's out of here. Crouch with his seventh home run. And it was a no-doubt line drive. Well, he's showing him that breaking ball too many times and the other two he hooked one the last one he hooked but this one I was talking about that pro to think about up the middle see his body how he went towards the middle to look the ball the opposite way this ball's up and he just tattooed it that's a missile thing was just smoked so Crouch has driven in both runs in this ball game with a double and a home run, always doing in the NCAA, which includes the regionals, the super regionals, and the College World Series, is hit 5-12 with three dingers. Unbelievable numbers. And now Carson Kiner. And Augie Garrido is a big believer when you've got the lead, and every run seems to make it bigger. The pressure mounts on the other team. They try to do too much and therefore make mistakes. This ball's down to McCarthy, throws across and got it. The inning is over, but Crouch has driven in another run. And it's 2-0 Texas. Augie Garrido joins Aaron Andrews when we come back. World Series Longhorns head coach Augie Garrido joining me right now. You told me today your team was very business-like, a lot different from them, what they were last year. Now that they've played a couple of innings, what do you think of them now? Well, they're still a little nervous. Both teams are still a little nervous. Uh, they're overswinging a little bit, and uh, we missed a ground ball that we normally don't miss, but um, it'll come off. Yeah, it'll come off. The, the nervousness will wear off. Augie, we talked about it in the broadcast. You chose to be the visiting team. Why is that? Well, uh... <laughs> Actually, because of the weather. It's supposed to be hot tomorrow, and the first base dugout takes a lot out of you. <laughs> and I think we have a better chance to stay cool. <laughs> They're laughing at you upstairs. It's not because you wanted to score first, huh? No, it's we wanted to, <laughs> we wanted to be cool. All right, well, cool you are, Augie. Thank you. <laughs> Guys? Yeah, too. He's too Augie's, much. Augie is so cool. <laughs> but that's not the reason. It is funny. 
You got to spend time with him to get to know him. He, he is just precious. Just a tremendous sense of humor. Justin Torty will lead it off for Texas. Of course, the Longhorns have become a fixture here after a long time absence before Augie Garrido took over the program. Had a little bit of a drought at Texas, something they're not used to in anything, and something that's unacceptable in any sport is a drought. Yeah. Not this place, man, Texas. You're expected to win. Augie does have a point about uh, the heat tomorrow. The visitors will wear the dark jerseys, and it's going to be about 95 in the afternoon. Well, I, th I thought it was interesting because the expectations are so high at Texas that he was like, I'm a little nervous about being in the championship. <laughs> no, again. And as you see, not nearly as hot here now. Moreau. <laughs> It was just a vacuum cleaner down at third. Uh, his footwork is, is flawless, and I'm telling you, I've seen a lot of guys fill a lot of ground balls. You're not going to find anybody better at third base at any level in baseball. Watch the simple backhand, the great footwork, and the strong arm across the diamond. And his, he had an arm injury. It's just starting to come back. They said they've clocked him at 94 on the mound. I mean, this guy can do it all defensively, and I'm, top, I'm talking with the top major league third baseman. He's that good. And got sort of a funny hop. Stayed right with it. Fastball misses. The thing that amazes me about him is the reaction time with an aluminum bat is even tougher than it is off a wood bat. Absolutely. Stephen Barton, the designated hitter and the number nine man in the order for the Florida Gators. And you've got to be impressed with Alanis, who has already won one game in the College World Series and just sailing along here, allowing only one hit so far. Well, the Gators have got to figure out what pitch they want to, they want to hit and, and sit on it because he's throwing his breaking ball for strikes like Kyle talked about before and also being able to spot that fastball. You can't hit everything. So you've got to start trying to figure out what I want to look for, and when I get it, I'm going to hit it. They're swinging the bat right now very much like they did the other night against Baylor. And that is a fair ball and fielded easily by Wheelers down first for the second out before that power explosion that they got in the middle innings. Well, I think it was Earl Weaver who used to always say, momentum is only as good as today's starter. And, you know, they've run into a couple buzz saws. This guy right here, and then against Baylor, McCormick was lights out. Yes, he was. With his stuff. So when you face a good pitcher, it's difficult. It's a team that hit 296 during the regular season, only 233 out here. And now Corsoletti, who led the game off with a single, was retired on a double play ground ball. The Gator coaches said Corsoletti has to be a factor for them to succeed out here, and he has been. Six out of 15 in Omaha. Well, each, each club has go-to guys, and it's easy to say, oh, the heart of the order, the power guys. But most of the time, when you look at lineups, it's the guys that, that put the ball in play. And, and, and if you start looking at playoff competition, it's the bottom of the order that does the damage. Those guys at the bottom that people don't expect. Yeah, if you can get those bonus hits from the 7, 8, 9 guys or a base on balls or mm -hmm. somebody who puts it in play and forces an error or whatever just to keep innings alive and then turn your order over, that's a huge bonus. And that's when Corsoletti plays a big role because now he's that guy that's got, that you're going to go to to drive those runs in. And he has driven in 53 this year. That's a huge number for a leadoff man. Tremendous. Tremendous amount. And that means he's... He's picking them up, and, and he knows he's going to get pitches to hit when you start looking down the order where you got Davis and Laporta hitting behind you. Plus, Corsoletti has 10 home runs this year. Swung over the top of that one, displeased with himself, three and two. And, and that's the difference maker for Alan Ease right there. Three one breaking ball. And we saw it before to the left-handers. He's able to throw that for strikes. And 
I, that statistic that Kyle gave earlier, 70% of his breaking balls for strikes, is phenomenal. And they went to that breaking ball instead of the straight change because he wasn't doing really well with that. This ball in the straightaway center, and Stubbs comes on to make an easy grab. Another one, two, three inning. And it's still 2 nothing Texas. NCAA College World Series information. Just log on to NCAAsports.com, the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships, including this best two out of three from Omaha and beautiful Rosenblatt Stadium. Another wonderful crowd on a perfect night for baseball in the Midwest. And that scary girl is back again. <laughs> well, she may be the good luck charm. That's one of the crazy heritages. Doesn't look like we'll good see. luck to me. <laughs> <laughs> this one's popped up on the infield by Taylor Teagarden. And Laporta comes in from first to make the catch. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, it's spreading. She's got a friend today. See, they knew we were going to put them on TV. There's probably going to be about 15 of them lined up. But tomorrow. is that worth it? <laughs> is that is that worth being on television? I guess so. When you're like 13, absolutely. Hammered outside first. Foul by Wheelis. Well, he's hurting already. Look at that shoulder right there. Struck out his first time up. Wheelis with that front shoulder that pops out of the joint. To me, that would be the pitch that would hurt it more than anything else. Reaching. Have, having to reach. But he looks like it's not really bothering him that much. That Augie said the trainers have figured out a way to help him feel, be comfortable with that and, and not have as much pain. Well, obviously, he is comfortable enough and courageous enough to give it a go and takes a sweeping breaking ball from Locke outside. Locke, by the way, that home run he gave up was his ninth allowed of the year, and that leads the Florida staff. That's in 63 innings, which is fourth or fifth on the innings pitch list. One out, nobody on for Wheelis in the Texas fourth. Longhorns are already up, and Wheelis hits a rocket into right center for a base hit. Aaron Andrews has more on Chance. Aaron. Well, Mike, you and Harold mentioned how Chance has that wrap around his right shoulder. He was telling us before the game that the inside pitches are easier for him to get than those outside ones because obviously reaching is a big problem for him. So he says he's still in a lot of pain. He's mostly scared than anything. So obviously keeping an eye on him throughout the game. All right. Thanks, Aaron. He certainly uh, smiled a lot for a guy who's been in pain because <laughs> yeah. I guess success will do that to you, too. Now Marol, who singled his last time up. He's got a better swing than a guy hitting only 234. It really does. And I, you know, I, I continue to rave about his defense. When you got that kind of hand-eye coordination, sometimes it depends on where you hit in the order, too, based on the pitches you get. And if he gets in the right place where he's going to have protection around him, he'll get some pitches to hit. In the air to left. Dickey retreating to the track, to the wall. Just carried and carried and carried and got out of here for his tenth home run of the year. Well, that just shows you how strong this kid is because he missed this ball. You know, he didn't quite get it, but he got enough of it. And here's a good look at the swing. This is just, oh, he squared that pretty good. He squared it a lot better than I thought he did. He crushed it. Actually, I thought he missed it because it was so high. But it looked like with the replay, he got it pretty good. And he got it on a day there's not a 
big wind breeze blowing that ball out of the ballpark. That's for sure. And that is the tenth home run allowed by Locke. He has been vulnerable to it, and it has really hurt him tonight. Crouch hit one, and now Marole. And this one is hit right at the third baseman, MacArthur. Out. He throws out Hudson for the second out of the inning. Well, I think the surprise about this Texas team is the power. You know, we talk so much about being able to bunt, move runners up, and things like that. But they've displayed some, some pretty good power. You look at their numbers. Yeah, that was only his 10th of the year. But playing in that ballpark they play in in Austin, that translates to about 15 in yeah. the other ball club. And 15 makes you a real power hitter in college baseball. Absolutely, it does. That's why you look at Laporta with 26 and your eyes just bulge out. This one misses low to Nick Peoples as we go back to the top of the order. Well, this game has been all Texas so far. Sure has. Pitching has dominated. The offense is dominating them. Drilled MacArthur. Great play to his right. Then he throws it away. MacArthur with a sensational stab. And how often have you seen it? Got to his feet, had time. Fired the ball and it was too high. Well, that's the thing you're going to see in the college game, and that's what distinguishes college from the pros. See how close he is. He's playing the runner in, so you got plenty of time on a hard smash, and he tried to put a little extra on it. And sometimes you got to have that clock in your head that says, this is how much time I have. And that's what you're going to see at the college level. You know, we talk so much about this guy was a fifth-round pick, this guy was a number one pick. That's all on projection. It's potential. Here's what we think he's going to be able to do once he plays a lot of games. And, and you know, when you play more games, you have more plays, and you learn from those mistakes. It's ruled a single and an error on the throw, allowing Peoples to go to second. Tremendous reaction by MacArthur to make the stop. As Harold said, he was even with the bag. And here's Connor Falkenbach, who has been tremendous out of the bullpen for the Gators. They had hoped not to have to use him up today and even thought about giving him a start. But if they started Falkenbach in this one, he would not be available for virtually anything else, and they need him out of the pen. He's their ace. No, you're right. And, but the thing is, it's so important to win this game today, it just especially with Texas having their pitching staff set up so beautifully, it's you got to win. Sure. Florida and Texas had four errors combined in seven College World Series games starting this one. Now they have four in this ball game, so the nerves are jingling a little bit. Well, you know, Augie just showed his experience in that interview when he said they're still nervous. And I I'm thinking, hey, they've already played two innings. It looks like everybody's starting to settle down. The crafty coach has been around. He, he knows. That still keep putting the pressure on. Stubbs with a chance to add to the Texas totals here in the fourth. Four nothing, a runner at second with two out. That one's inside, and they'd love to get. They were looking for five or six innings, perhaps out of lock. They'd have been very happy with that. Right now, they're hoping he can get through the fourth. Yeah, he's not fooling anybody. Even the outs are being hit hard right now. And, and, and that is a dangerous sign. Change up, one and two. Harold, I, I've always believed that that's a more dangerous sign even than base hits. I think people make too much of dribblers and bloops. They say, well, they're hits. Well, they weren't hit very hard. They're not all going to fall. You're absolutely right. And, and I think a pitcher would agree with you. When you see a guy all of a sudden starting to get hit, his whole temperament changes out there. Didn't get a good swing at that one. Nice pitch by Locke to get out of the inning, but he gives up a two-run home run to David Marole, and Texas is now up 4-0 here in the College World Series.
Tired of waiting for your reward? Now that you can get thank you points with your city credit card and for banking at Citibank, you'll get cool stuff sooner. You're, wa you're watching ESPN's coverage of the 2005 College World Series where the Texas Longhorns are taking on the Florida Gators from Omaha, Nebraska. Due to time constraints, we move ahead in our coverage. Beautiful sunset in Omaha above Rosenblatt Stadium. Texas continues to lead Florida four to nothing. And we hope you'll join us tomorrow afternoon on ESPN at 3 o'clock Eastern. It's game two of this championship series, the College World Series, also available in high definition on ESPN HD. MacArthur scheduled to hit. Instead, it will be Bryson Barber to hit for him. As Pat McMahon starting to try to push some buttons here in the seventh to get something going. And MacArthur had struggled with the bat out here. Jay Brent Cox, the Texas formidable closer, is up. And Alanese has given them a superb outing so far. The numbers on Barber, only a 233 hitter. And this is his first at bat in the College World Series. And you can bet the nerves are jangling a little bit. Yeah, he's got to be a little excited. Watching him hit, he's got electric hands. He's got some quick hands, and that's probably one of the reasons they're allowing him hit here. Takes a called strike on 3 and 0. Oh. You know, this has been a textbook game for Texas. I mean, they wanted to get to the seventh inning and get an opportunity to, to go ahead. Thank you for the sign. That's awful nice. Aren't we all? <laughs> Strike two called as Barber was looking for a walk. Got to take that pitch right there in that situation. They need base runners. That's the main key. But they wanted to reduce it to a seven inning game and get this guy in the ball game. You see the numbers right there. And he is the guy who will come in for two or more. This is grounded to Johnston. It's short. Throws it across. And got the out. Nice tag by Wheelis as the throw drew him off the bag. Well, here's the grounder. And, and Seth Johnson just hasn't been himself today. This is a wild throw from him. You don't see that very often. But this is the, the question is the reach. Watch how Wheelis has to reach, and that is where that shoulder is going to hurt. Remember, they take the tape job off so he can go play first base and then retape it when it's his turn to hit. Barber's out 6-3, to three, and now LeClaire with Dickey on deck. <laughs> and the Gators looking to scratch out anything they can to get something started. And those hitters know that Jay Brent Cox is out there. They know his reputation, how good he is. And this could be their last real opportunity with that kid coming out, although well, you, you have to think they're going to be happy to see Alanis leave. He, he, He's handcuffed them completely. I'm telling you, he has got them baffled. It's, it's a, all his games combined here at the College World Series. Have just been superb, and that ball was crushed. Foul by LeClaire. LeClaire's had some good ABs. He fouled a couple balls last at bat down the line before he ended up striking out. But the problem is he doesn't give you much to hit. He's so frustrating. One of these guys, you go back and go, how did I not get any hits off him? Two and two, swung over a curveball and struck out. It's a nasty breaking ball, just bites right underneath his hands. Right there, he just swung over the ball. And the thing that I see out of that one is he's throwing two different types of breaking pitches, and he's throwing them for strikes. The Gators just haven't had any luck. They have not had a runner advance to third. Only have a couple of hits, and Dickey stands in with two out and nobody on. 
Uh, this is total domination. I mean, he has dominated them. Devin had good swings. Very few balls been hit hard. It pours a fastball in there to get the count even at one and one. Breaking pitch right back to Alanis. An easy one, two, three inning. Alanis has given up two hits and no runs through seven and has a four nothing advantage. Let's take a look at our Diet Coke game track from the College World Series in Omaha. And it's been Texas Power with Will Crouch. A home run in the third a line drive shot down the left field line. And then David Marole with a towering fly ball that got out of here. A two-run shot. And Adrian Alaniz has made it stand up. Seven innings, only two hits. He struck out five and very rarely been in danger. And that's what they wanted out of that young man. He could go seven innings and set it up for the bullpen. The new third baseman, Matt Gasky, who often comes in from MacArthur as a defensive replacement at third. Carson Kiner will lead it off in the eighth against Connor Falkenbach. And if you look at Alan E's in the dugout, this is the look of somebody who's not coming out of the game yet. There's no ice. Still got the sweat going. He's got the arm wrap to come back. So he's, I'd be surprised if he's out of this ball game. Fastball's a little bit low. Well, you consider the thinking of the coaches. You're in the seventh inning. The kids got a shutout going. If you can save Cox instead of use him up for a couple innings. You know, maybe he'll be more effective uh, sat, uh, Sunday and Monday if you have to use him then. Well, absolutely. you got to think about all those those things coming to an equation when you're playing on an everyday basis now. Because... Uh, now, certainly, if, if he goes out for the eighth and the game gets closer, you'd have to think that Cox uh, is ready to go and would come in. Well, he's warmed up. He's ready. You can see he's got the wrap on. If you start with Alanis, you get Brent Cox up immediately. He's in the game if you get into any danger. Well, you want to win game one. Uh, I think you go back out with the young man see what happens. This one is drilled to straightaway center, but Corsoletti got there to make the catch. That ball was hit on the button. It had some kind of slice. It started about three steps to his right, hey. headed toward left center, and, and tailed back to him. I hit I used to hate that right there. You hit a ball hard and everybody wants to give you a high five. You want to knock their arm off. You kidding me? <laughs> he didn't get a hit. <laughs> Taylor Teagarden. Strike in there from Falkenbach. Well, the other reason you don't get J. Brent Cox up too soon if your offense adds two more runs, you definitely don't go to him okay. right now in this situation. You get a little big lead, you may go to somebody else if you need to. But you're absolutely right, Mike. I mean, you start thinking about the next two games. At this point in time, you got to manage all that. All those things come into the equation. Plus, if you think Alanis has something left, you know, when are you going to bring back Alanis? Is he going to pitch Sunday or Monday? Uh, you have to think he's probably, you know, finished for the series no matter what. So if you can get... Uh, the eighth and ninth out of them with no damage and haven't pitched a shutout, why not? Yeah, absolutely. But they certainly know the pitching staff better than we do. And a lot of people have the, you know, just a philosophical bent. We're going to have a reliever come in in the eighth, you know, maybe a setup guy, and then we'll have someone come in in the ninth. Cox is going to do both, and there's a ground out for the second out of the inning. Well, unless he's coming straight here to warm up when the inning starts. He's either, not, I don't think he's coming in. Well, Alanis does have two complete games and one shutout. The shutout was a no-hitter. But you have to go all the way back to March 25th for the last time Florida was shut out through six innings. And that was a loss that they had to South Carolina, 2-0. 
And now they have been shut out through seven and two thirds. And we'll have a pitching change for the Gators. We'll check that out in a moment. NCAA Championships on ESPN, the College World Series, is brought to you by New Metered Release Aerometrics for a long-lasting auto fragrance that's never out of control. And Home Depot, you can do it, we can help. Welcome back to Omaha, Nebraska, the site of the College World Series, a city that seems to grow by leaps and bounds every year that we come back for the College World Series. And we have a new pitcher for the Florida Gators. He is senior left-hander, Mike Pete, as Falkenbach has done after three and two-thirds innings, three hits and no runs. Pete 4-0 this year, making his 26th appearance for the Gators. Well, he's going to feature a fastball about 84 to 86. He's got a curveball and a change with that also. And really has pitched well the last six weeks. He's been on fire. And believe it or not, his best pitch has been a BP fastball. And that's just one of those get me over fastballs. Let me see if you're going to hit it. So he's going to challenge guys and be around the plate. He comes in to face the only left-hander in the lineup, Chance Wheelis. He needs an opportunity to get Pete some work and maybe save Falkenbach because they hope they need him out of the bullpen as their closer. Yeah, he was lights out, keeping them close in this ball game. He's given them a chance. Yes, he has. Wheelis usually hits left-handers pretty well. Came into this game hitting 4-11 in his last 14 ball games. So he has been a star in the postseason. Connor Falkenbach, three and two-thirds through 48 pitches. This one's popped foul. David Merol is on deck. Merol's another guy who has a chance to hit for the cycle tonight. Two players in the same lineup. Wow. That he didn't go around. It's 2-2. Two, two. Well, the definition in the college game is if you start your swing, and I, I think that's got to be a start to swing right there. Like it, that's it? a tough call. I, I'm, I'm sorry. It's hard to even say with uh, with anything. That's a difficult, difficult call. Well, that was a swing. He went on that one. <laughs> Chance Wheelis is gone, and so is Texas in the eighth. We'll see if Jay Brent Cox is coming on for the Longhorns in a moment. For the eighth, four nothing Texas. Let's take a look at our Pontiac game-changing performance from Kyle Peterson. Up tonight of Adrian Allen, as we talked about him coming in and really his ability to control two pitches, he throws two different kinds of breaking balls too. That curveball and the slider, but both have been huge tonight. Not a lot of strikeouts, but that's not the kind of guy he is. He just commands the zone and has worked ahead and account all night. We told you earlier about his ability to command that breaking ball. How about these numbers so far tonight? 76% first pitch strikes. He's throwing that break a ball over the plate 67 percent of the time with those two things makes it real tough to sit on one pitch up there at the plate Kyle you would have the most valuable input on this would uh, if you're the pitching coach are you going to leave Alanis in here with a four nothing lead in the eight yeah I think you leave him in there but I also think you make sure that Jay Brent Cox is ready we talked about Augie Garrido wanting to make this a seven inning game but if you can get away with not having to use your closer today I think you take advantage of that Torty trying to bunt his way on Hudson can't come up with it Let's go to the studio. Matt Weiner has our Sports Center 30 at 30 update.
All right, Matt, thanks very much. And Justin Torty trying to get something started. Gets a bunt single, only the third hit of the ball game for the Florida Gators and brings up the number nine man in the order, Stephen Barton, the DH. And there is Cox making sure he's ready. Well, I, I like the play. You know, we talked about the, the base running earlier. Now you push a bunt. It was an excellent bunt, by the way. And you put the, you take the pitcher out of his rhythm again. You got to try something because he has just dominated this game. Strike called. Two balls and a strike to Barton, who has grounded out twice. And it's three for nine in the College World Series. This one gets away from Taylor Teagarden and allows Torty to get into second base. These are the type of things that happen in college baseball that just you never know what's going to happen. Here's a, a breaking ball that just went off the top of the glove of one of the best catchers in the country. And now you got to run her second base and the double play is out of order. And a 3-1 count on the hitter. Runners on base always have the potential to distract people. Beautiful pitch on the corner. Three and two to Stephen Barton. And the Gator hitters are going to be very, very patient, which is part of their philosophy always. But particularly now, they just need base runners. That pitch was out of the zone and fouled away by Barton. Well, it's, I would rather see a guy aggressive with two strikes and be called out on a pitch two strikes. You never want to leave it in the hands of the umpire. Anything close, you want to be protecting. And that was, that's what he was doing there. And I know you're nodding your head because you agree. I do. Another payoff pitch from Alanis. That one's too high. First and second, nobody out in the eighth, and Augie Garrido is not going to watch much longer. No, and that's why you're having it's the, the catcher T guard and having a little conversation because you're making sure 100% Jay Brent Cox is ready. They got the hat waving from the bullpen saying the big guy is ready to come in, and you probably will see him give him a couple more pitches, and I think that's about it for Alanis. It takes us back to the top of the order to Corsoletti, who was 0 for 3, and Augie not ready to make the move as yet. Here they come now. And now here they come. <laughs> Pitching coach Tom Holliday will come out to make the change. What a game he's had. Hasn't he ever? Well, he came into the inning with 110 pitches, so you knew he was on the uh, the gas tank was down low as it was. But I think you hit it on the uh, the nail on the head, Mike, when you said he's done for the season anyway. Get the most out of him. Now home plate umpire A.J. Lestaglio is going to go out and make sure that they want to make a change here, and now they point for J. Brent Cox. He will be making his 105th appearance in his career at Texas. That will tie Houston Street for number one all time. This is Adrian Alanese gets a tremendous hand as he leaves, and Jay Brent Cox comes on. The freshman was absolutely yeah, superb, was. gave up only three wow. hits through seven plus innings. We told you. Texas a fierce competitor, but very quiet and reserved. You don't see much emotion as he was in the dugout. But he has really done Texas a tremendous service tonight. Jay Brent Cox, a superb 1.82 ERA. 41st appearance of the year, 105th of his career. And the great closer Houston Street, who he succeeded, has been tied in that appearance number. Alanis went seven innings, three hits, no runs, four walks, five strikeouts, through 118 pitches. 
responsible for both runners on board. And we go back to the top of the order and the dangerous Jeff Corsoletti. And Cox gets the first pitch over a breaking ball for strike. And they've got to be thinking, well, we, <laughs> we got Alanis out of there. He was killing us with that first pitch breaking ball. And Cox starts him with the same thing. Well, J. Brett Cox, the guy, if he stays healthy, you're going to see in the big leagues sometimes. He's got a sharp, late breaking slider, electric fastball. There's that late break right there. And that one got away again from T Garden. And the runners will advance to second and third. Well, you probably will not see T Garden have this bad of an inning again. He's a tremendous catcher. That's two pass balls in the inning on T Garden. Oh, that's a tough pitch to yes, catch it right is. there. He set up outside and he had to come all the way back in, so the pitcher missed his location. It's tough to get a pass ball on that. But runners at second and third, an opportunity for the Gators and Corsoletti in an 0 2 hole. Just got a piece of this to stay alive. Well, I think it's interesting. He hasn't even shown his fastball yet. He's thrown three breaking pitches to Corsoletti. So you've really got him set up, I think, more for the fastball than necessarily his, his off speed pitch. What are you thinking as a hitter, and what do you think he'll throw? Well, I'm thinking I haven't seen his fastball yet, so I got to be looking for it, but I, I still can't gauge how hard he's throwing this particular game. Another breaking ball. So you're going to have defensive swings unless he really makes a mistake. I think he's got more of a chance of making a mistake hanging a breaking pitch as opposed to putting him away with a fastball in this situation. The next three guys, a lot of power. Corsoletti, Davis, and Laporta. This, you would think, is the Gators' opportunity right here with the big guns. Yeah, this is it. You're coming to the heart of the order. You, you've got a bunt that, and then you had a, a pass ball to move the runner to second. You get a swing and miss with the ball to go to the fence. You got second and third. You got no outs. You got the starter out of there. This is their inning. One and two to Corsoletti. That one's in the dirt blocked by Teagard. Well, you need contact out of Corsoletti. The infield is back. They're giving you a run, and this is how you you got to add on. you got to pick something up here, but a strikeout is what's on Brent Cox's mind. That's why you're seeing so many sliders. That is his out pitch. Two balls and two strikes to Corsoletti. They're down 4 nothing. Fastball called, strike three. Corsoletti thought it was low. Well, that's an that's a advantage that he had because he had, he'd only shown him one fastball. And oftentimes when you haven't seen a guy's fastball, it can freeze you. Now, is it down? Possibly. But two strikes. We talked about it earlier. Too close to take. Too close to take. Got to protect it. But he was deceived because of the fastball. The other one he showed him was just a waste fastball you up. You will see that. And coming down, tough to pick. Adam Davis hitless and Pat McMahon upset with the call as well. These are obviously very critical at bats for the Gators chances to win this ball game. Seventy nine mile an hour pitch that Davis was out in front of. Well, the reason it was so important for Corsoletti to put that ball in play, if you put it in play, the run scores, and most likely the runners are going to move up. And Jay Brent Cox is doing what big-time closers do. They come in and make people look bad and try to shut down situations where it looks like runs are automatic. Well, he's, he's got a nasty slider with a late, hard break, and it's tough to pick up because the motion looks like a fastball. And he got him with a fastball. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Jay Brent Cox. Here's the fastball, and that's it's coming out of the same arm slot as the slider. It's so tough to pick up. I said the other night, he reminds me of Jeff Nelson when Nelson was on his game with the Yankees in that run when they went to the series. Same type of stuff. He can throw that slider at any pitch, and he's got that fastball up there, too. And I'm sure, as you see, the second round with the Yankees, that's what they saw. Now Laporta, the nation's leading home run hitter. 
bad as their pitching's been, they need to get this series over and get him to New York. <laughs> Did he check his swing? No. Went around one and one. Laporta, a base hit tonight, a double. And the Gators can't let this opportunity get away. They had two on with nobody out. Cox has come out of the bullpen to strike out Corsoletti and Davis. The other thing I like about him, man, he's like he's in a shootout. He's got ice in his veins. Right back up the middle and through into center field, a base hit. That will get two runs home. And Matt Laporta comes through for the Gators again. He got a fastball and took it right back up the middle. Talked a lot about his power, but just putting the ball in play, and he finds a hole, and the Gators got life. You never know what's going to happen. You got a guy who's been lights out, lights out the first two hitters, thinking no way anybody's going to hit him. Brian Geraldman stands in, and with one swing of the bat, he can tie it up for the Gators in the eighth. Hit the ball really hard his last time up, line to right. He has a single and a walk, as well as the line out tonight. Eight home runs. Another power guy. He has a home run in the College World Series. Breaking pitch on the corner. This is the way the Gators got back into it the other night with power. And it's a great opportunity right here. This, I, I like Geraldo's chances here. He, he's the type of guy that can stay inside the ball and hit that slider because he can hit a ball left center field, which we saw him do earlier for the first hit of the game. And yet he can get out in front of one and, and put it in the seats. Another breaking pitch, same place, one and two. That's nasty. Those runs were charged to the starter, Alanis. And he deserved better. Yes, he did. Breaking pitch hangs outside. It's two and two to the left-hand hitting catcher. Two runs are home in the eighth. They've cut the lead in half and have the potential tying run at the plate in Geraldman with Laporta down at first. He's falling in love with that slider. I bet he throws another one. Well, they set up down and in, and he was high and away. That'll be 3 2 and give Laporta an extra step at first. Well, watching him warm up, he didn't look as sharp as he did the other day, but his stuff is is so good, he can pitch himself out of jams. Missed. Two runners aboard. Now Matt Gasky, who was the defensive replacement, will get an at bat with runners at first and second. Well, you said this is their inning. It, it, it ha almost had to be their inning. You almost get the feeling it's now or never. LeClaire would bat if Gasky can keep it alive. A breaking pitch inside corner. That was a hittable breaking ball up in the zone, and Gasky was taking. Laporta and Geraldo are the base runners. Neither runs particularly well. Gasky has that one well away from him and takes it outside. Gasky, a 364 hitter, but he's only had 11 at bats. What a big situation for him. Checks his swing on a fastball. It's two and one. 11 at bats, and you got to face him. So you know what he's looking for. He's looking to get that fastball right here. 
He may get it too. Mm -hmm. Now he got a breaking ball for a called strike two and two. That's what makes him so tough to hit. Again, talked earlier in the game about pitching backwards. Well, you're sitting dead fastball in that situation. He ends up throwing a slider in the back door, back half. Two out, two on. Hasn't batted since June 5th. Outside, 3-2. And the runners will have a chance to start again. And the Gator fans can't watch anymore. Well, he's pitching him like he had on that bat two days ago. Florida with its best scoring chance of the entire game. They already have two run home. Ball four. They're loaded. I just don't like the pitch sequence he went with right there. You got to know who you're pitching against. And he threw too many breaking balls in that sequence. He threw one 2-2. Two, two. He threw one 3-2. And when you got a guy that doesn't have that many ABs, you got to go after him. Now, this may be what Tom Holliday is coming to talk about. The thing I like, though, is that Augie Greedo and the Texas staff lets these kids call the game. They call their ball game. Well, we have gone all the way since 2001 without a grand slam before they were almost common out here in the uh, days of gorilla ball. We seem to see one every year or more. And now with Holiday going to the mound, there is no action in the Texas bullpen. This is still up to Jay Brent Cox. I just want to go out and talk to him about what's going on. He has loaded the bases, a single and a pair of walks. Laporta is down at third. Girolaman, who represents the tying run, walked in this at second. And Matt Gasky with an outstanding at bat draws a walk. He's at first. He's the potential go-ahead run. And now Brian LeClaire, who's third on the team with 14 home runs, stands in against Cox, who starts him with a breaking ball and misses. There's no place to put him. you got to come after this power-hitting left hand. And he's the, he right now is the best hitter on the team. He's had the best approaches of anybody. Another breaking pitch. Got this one in there, one and one. He saw that pitch pretty good, too. Pretty relaxed up there blowing bubbles. And LeClaire can really jerk it. That's way outside from Cox. He's a breaking ball pitcher. He's throwing a breaking ball every pitch. Sure has. It's incredible. Two balls and a strike to LeClaire. Can the Gators make a comeback here in the eighth? 2-2 two, two on the foul ball. Another break of pitch. It's about 6-1 to one breaking balls over fastball. Yes, it is. It's, it's amazing. He gave up a base hit that was a dribbler up the middle on a fastball, and he hasn't gone back to it. And now action. Buck Cody, the left-hander. Randy Boone, the right-hander. 2-2 two and two to LeClaire. Strike him out! Jay Brent Cox gets out of an enormous jam after allowing two runners to score. And 4 2 will go to the night. We will go to the ninth inning. Texas leading Florida 4 2. The Gators rallied the eighth for a pair. They were bidding for more. And Jay Brent Cox, the closer for the Texas Longhorns, came through. LeClaire. On one down and in. And Cox had to be upset with himself because he created a lot of that jam on his own with his inability to get the ball over. Well, I think he just got away from challenging guys. You know, when you see a pitcher throwing that many breaking pitches, it tells you he doesn't have a whole lot of confidence in his fastball. And he's going to have to be more than a one pitch pitcher if he wants to get through this game because he's not. He's not fooling them with the breaking ball. Darren O'Day with eight wins this year for the Gators will be the new pitcher. Side armor from Jacksonville. Big kid, 6'3", 220. O'Day the fourth pitcher used. Stephen Locke was the starter. Gave up all four runs. 
You know, very rare do you see two drop down pitchers on the same staff. Kyle, you ever been around that where you see two drop downs on the same staff? No, you don't. You know, with these two guys, they're two kind of different pitchers. Falkenbach's a guy that doesn't throw quite as hard. They'll run it up there. I mean, he can bump 90. We saw him come in the other night against Nebraska. And in, in a ball game where you thought he was going to come in and go an inning or two, he went the last four and two thirds. So it was the ability to get right handers and left handers up. And that fastball is a little better than Falkenbach's. Thank you, Kyle. Here's Marole. He'll lead it off three for three. Another big night for him in the College World Series. He's five for 11 out here in Omaha and needs a triple to hit for the cycle. And hits this one to straightaway center field for Saletti backing and will make the catch. First out of the night. I, I still think even that swing right there, he just missed it. Anytime you've seen a pitcher dropping down before, another guy comes in dropping down there, you, you've got your eyes already set down in that slot. And they, even though he may throw a little bit harder, it's still basically the same look. There's no deception anymore in that motion. Now Hudson, the number nine man in the order, to be followed by the leadoff hitter, Nick Peoples. They must have gave him the take right there. <laughs> yeah. Texas grabbed the lead early, as they so often do, and really want to, based on the statistics, it's a huge advantage. They got one in the first, one in the third, two in the fourth. And Augie Garrido knows all about pressure and how it can be applied to other teams. He's done it at Cal State Fullerton. He's done it at Texas. It's worked everywhere he's been and worked brilliantly. Well, you can clearly feel a little momentum shift here, too, in the Can't ballpark. You? you can just feel it. You almost at sense like Texas needs to pick up another run if they want to win this game. Hudson, one and two. <laughs> Fouls this one back. And Texas is keeping the bullpen active. They, it's not going to be up to Jay Brent Cox, I don't think, the entire ninth inning. If he gets in trouble, you're liable to see the closer have somebody come in behind him. Woo. Called strike three on Hudson. Fastball caught the inside corner. Two gone for Texas in the ninth. Well, here's that fastball. Just gets in on the right-hander. That's a tough pitch to hit. Tails back in on you. That's impossible. Yeah, that's impossible to hit, really. Uh, you know, you hate to see that happen when you got two strikes. You want that plate expanded a little bit more when you don't. Peoples, who has a walk tonight, takes a called strike. And O'Day certainly does have a little more giddy up than Falkenball. Yeah, you said just exactly what I was thinking. He's getting it up there. Good breaking pitch on the inside corner at the knees. It's one thing to have a guy with a crossfire. It's another guy to have a crossfire with a 92 mile an hour <laughs> fastball. Dropping That'll get down. your heart started. Dropping down from that holster down there, letting it go. Struck him out. An impressive inning from Darren O'Day. Gator Penn, five innings of scoreless relief. They lead Texas, or down by Texas, to two. Beautiful Rosenblatt Stadium in Omaha. The scene of the College World Series, Texas on top of Florida, 4-2. We go to the bottom of the ninth, and the NCAA College World Series continues tomorrow at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, game two of the championship series. The College World Series is also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Jay Brent Cox, who had control problems in his first inning of relief, coming in for Adrian Alanese. Will now try to close it out in the ninth. Chris Woods will be the pinch hitter for Gavin Dickey.
Justin Torty and Stephen Barton, the bottom men in the order, are scheduled to follow. Hope to get a couple of these guys as table setters and turn the lineup over to the big guys at the top, starting with Corsoletti. But somebody has to get on for that to happen. Well, you can clearly see that they had a little conversation with Jay Brent Cox and said, you better start throwing that fastball. You know, I'm sure that they couldn't have been too pleased watching him throw slider after slider and walking people. Look out. Oh, Kyle Peterson. <laughs> Look out, Kyle. <laughs> Man, watch out. Broke that Rolex, didn't it? <laughs> Still a <in> one piece. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> Almost took his watch and his left arm with him. Took a lick and his kept on ticking. How come you didn't catch that ball? Oh, geez. Every bit of it. 0-2 oh, and got him to fan at a high outside fastball. The philosophy has changed from Jay Brent Cox. Well, and he, he, he needed to be more aggressive. I think sometimes when you come in a ball game and you're so worried about not allowing inherited runners to score, you get a little tentative, and he got caught in that mindset of throwing breaking ball. Baseball tonight comes up next, and Jay Brent Cox has retired all four men by strikeout. Also walked a pair to get himself into a huge jam. Justin Torty stands in, the shortstop. One out, nobody on for the Gators. A fastball just sails inside, 2-0. Oh. Well, he's missing his spots, but and sometimes that's why you don't get that call from the umpire. You set up the catcher outside, and the ump also, and the ball lingers back in. You, you, you don't get it. There's a fastball in there. Torty, remember, started the eighth inning with a bunt base hit, pushed toward the second baseman to get the rally going in the eighth and scored. Well, the, and the count now two and two to Torty. The other thing, Mike, is that you know they're taking a strike in this situation. Sure. So he came up there and threw a first pitch breaking ball. And I'm sure they were yelling in the Texas dugout, he's taking a strike, throw the fastball there. And you saw Torty take the 2-0 fastball right down the middle. Breaking pitch on 2-2, two -two, foul back in the right field stands. will play tomorrow afternoon in game two of the series. If the team split the first two, we'll play Monday night here at Rosenblatt in game three of this championship best two out of three. Struck him out. Two gone in the ninth. Five strikeouts for Jay Brent Cox. Well, the key to this half inning has been the fastball because it sets up everything else. Here's a slider right here to get him out. But it's because he started to throw that fastball. He saw it to the first hitter, and then he saw it to totally here. I think it's got to be the same recipe. First pitch for a strike, one fastball. Called strike one. Stephen Barton, the designated hitter, the junior. Very good athlete, a contact hitter. Trying to get a board is in an 0-2 hole. If he gets on, the tying run comes to the plate. But he's got to do his part first. And Cox looks much sharper in the ninth than he did in the eighth. He looks like the guy who's made 105 career appearances. And that one just a little bit outside. That's the way the night's going, isn't it? Isn't it? Well, that's that waste pitch they set up a lot of times, and then now he comes back and paints something on him. Going for his 18th save this year. Struck him out! Jay Brent Cox records all six outs on strikeouts. And the Texas Longhorns 
win it. Alanis gets his eighth victory of the year, lock five and two with the loss. And Jay Brent Cox with a tremendous 18th save. That's in Texas's 52 wins this year. Tomorrow afternoon, 3 o'clock, the Gators try to stay alive. They'll face the Longhorns again in game two of this championship series on ESPN. Harold, that was quite a performance by Texas, although they almost let Florida back in it. Our final score, Texas over Florida, 4-2. Baseball tonight coming up next. A reminder, this game can be seen again on ESPNU at 11 o'clock Eastern. For Harold Reynolds, Kyle Peterson, and Aaron Andrews, this is Mike Patrick. Thanks for watching, everyone. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.